Hey everyone, today we'll be taking a look at a wireless gaming mouse from Razer, the Viper V2 Pro. Now this mouse has been on the market for around 4 months or so now since its launch in May 2022 and is advertised by Razer to be the successor to its popular Viper Ultimate. We'll take a look at the specs of this mouse, unbox it and have a go at gaming with this mouse to see how the gaming experience is like. Let's get started. In terms of its packaging, the Viper V2 Pro comes in the usual Razer colorway with a green on black colour scheme, and the quality of the packaging is good as well. Moving over to the rear, we get the usual overview of specs for this mouse. We'll run through these features a little more in depth later in this video. Here it is, the Razer Viper V2 Pro. We'll set it aside for the moment so that we can see what accessories Razer has included with it. First up, we get a wireless USB dongle. And you'll see that it also comes with a dongle adapter which on one end has a USB Type-A port and on the other end, a USB Type-C port. Now this dongle is to be used together with a USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable so as to allow users to place the wireless dongle as close as possible to the mouse. Now let's check out what's included inside this box. First up, we get a USB Type-A to USB Type-C speed flex cable which is used to charge the mouse and allows you to use the Viper V2 Pro as a wired mouse while it charges. Along with the cable are a set of USB connector protective covers which are a nice touch. Now let's set aside the cable for now and have a look at the documentation that's included with the mouse. First up, we get a note right here that is apparently from the CEO of Razer. Apart from this, we also get a sheet of grip tapes that allow you to increase the amount of friction on the sides of the mouse as well as on the left and right mouse buttons. Apart from these, we also get a user manual that looks pretty nice. I really like the whole silver font on black aesthetic. And to round things off, we also get a sheet of Razer stickers. And with that, onto the mouse itself. Right, so first impressions, it's a really light mouse and weighs in at a mere 58 grams. Now given its lightweight, it almost feels like you're holding onto a hollow plastic shell, but even so, it somehow manages to feel sturdily built, with no discernible rattles or squeaks. In spite of its light weight, Razer did not have to go for a design with holes, which is great. In terms of dimensions, this mouse has the dimensions that you see on the screen, and unlike its predecessor, the Viper Ultimate, the Viper V2 Pro no longer has an ambidextrous design, meaning to say, left-handed users would be out of luck, as the Viper V2 Pro has a symmetrical right-handed design with no side buttons on the right side of the mouse. That's it, the action of the buttons feel pretty decent, like so, although as you can see, I noticed that there seems to be some sideways play when the left mouse button and right mouse buttons are fully pressed. I also noticed post-click travel, like so, which I guess these two issues can be attributed to the way that the Viper V2 Pro is constructed. That said, the scroll wheel has a rubberized texture for better grip and feels great to use with distinct scroll steps. Right beneath the scroll wheel is a multifunction indicator LED that serves as a battery level indicator as well as a DPI setting indicator. Moving over to the left side of the mouse, we get two programmable side buttons that protrude sufficiently for ease of use. Aesthetics-wise, it's finished predominantly in matte plastic with some bits in glossy plastic for added contrast. RGB junkies will be disappointed to note the lack of any RGB lighting for the Viper V2 Pro. Even the Razer logo is just a simple gloss printed affair near the palm rest area. 
And this is for good reason I suppose, seeing as RGB lighting would probably impair the battery life of the mouse. Moving over to the front of the mouse, you'll spot a USB Type-C port, which is used to charge the mouse via the included SpeedFlex cable. Again, you can use this mouse as a wired mouse while charging it up, which is convenient. As for the bottom of the Viper V2 Pro, we see that it's a simple affair. We get PTFE plastic feet and a single button that doubles up as the power switch for the mouse and as a toggle for end users to change between 5 preset DPI settings on the fly. To switch the mouse on, all you've got to do is press and hold the button for 3 seconds. Thereafter, the indicator LED will light up to show that it's been successfully switched on. On the other hand, a short press of the same button will switch between DPI settings and the LED indicator lights up a different colour to show which DPI setting that you are on as per this screen grab from the user manual of the mouse. On to some tech specs of this mouse. The Viper V2 Pro comes with an industry-leading 30K DPI sensor, though I doubt few, if any at all, would be using this mouse at its maximum DPI setting. It also features what Razer calls asymmetric cutoff, which allows users to configure both the liftoff and landing distance to suit one's style of gameplay, meaning to say that you would be able to set the distance that the sensor stops tracking once you've lifted the mouse off from the mouse pad. The mouse also uses Razer's Gen 3 optical mouse switches, which are rated for a life cycle of up to 90 million clicks and has an advertised battery life of up to 80 hours. For those of you who may use different PCs for gaming, Razer's got you covered with onboard memory that stores last used settings from Razer's Synapse software, such as DPI, polling rate, and liftoff distance. Onto the usage experience with the mouse. I played several rounds of Fortnite with the mouse, and as a gamer who uses more of a claw grip while gaming, I found the mouse comfortable to use with its lower profile. Although gamers who prefer a higher hump and use a palm grip may find the Viper V2 Pro a little wanting in this department. Using a woven mouse pad here, Razer's Gigantus V2, I found the glide action of the mouse to be very smooth and the positioning of the side buttons was just right. Now I typically game at a DPI setting of between 800 to 1000, so I naturally found the 30k DPI setting way too overkill for me. But hey, I guess this is all in the name of being at the leading edge of gaming mouse technologies. I also liked the inclusion of the dongle adapter, which affords more flexibility in terms of how you like to connect the wireless USB dongle to your PC where you can attach it to the USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable that is included with the Viper V2 Pro and position the dongle to be as close as possible to where you'd be using the mouse. All in all, the Razer Viper V2 Pro is a good product that somehow manages to serve up all its features despite its light weight. For someone who games with a claw grip, the Viper V2 Pro was comfortable to use, though I personally am not all that much concerned about having the lightest possible gaming mouse. This brings me to the elephant in the room, its position and pricing relative to its predecessor, the Viper Ultimate. As of September 2022, the V2 Pro is pricey and available online for around $149, US while the Ultimate can be had for around $98. US. At first glance, it would appear that Razer's charging more for less. With the Viper V2 Pro, there's no more RGB lighting, no more side buttons on the right side of the mouse, and no more charging dock as compared to its predecessor. Of course, in return, you do get an industry-leading 30K DPI sensor, 16 grams of weight reduction, and a longer advertised battery life. With these in mind, to get this mouse or not, will boil down to how much you would value these new features and whether or not you can live with the trade-offs. With that, thank you so much for watching, do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys around the next time.